My father and I were scouting out an area for him to go hunting at to see if the elk in that region had moved on or were still there. Seeing as how we brought the trailer with the truck and how the forest service closes off the gate to that area after 8 o'clock, we decided to stay the night, locking the trailer door and keeping the 357 next to the bed. As aggressive coyotes have been in the area, and the forest service told people to be careful, as many, if not all the dogs, had rabies, and they were tracking them down as fast as they could. At about midnight, I woke up to shuffling noises outside and noticed how my father was sitting upright holding something, not the 357, but a 30 6 rifle he kept in the cab of his truck in case of an emergency. And he'd aimed it right at the door. Dad, what are you doing? Quiet. Grab the 357 from my side. There's something out there. Something big. I did, as I was told, and grabbed the gun, loading it with the 44 Magnum bullets we brought, as you can use both 357 and 44 in my dad's gun. What was out there? More shuffling. Closer to the side of the trailer now. Then something sniffing. Shh. The thing, whatever it was, would have likely hurt us if we'd talked then. As right when my father finished, it growled, walking along the length of the trailer towards the door. More sniffing. Then I heard whispering from all the directions at once. And this brought back deeply repressed memories from months before when I first encountered something of nightmares. A Wendigo. Wendigos were things of Native American folklore associated with cannibalism, frozen and devoured bodies, and showed up to possess those who had consumed human flesh or edged those who were starving closer to the evil deed. My last encounter nearly cost me my life, and I sure as hell wasn't going to die like this. When the thing reached the door, we could see its outline through the window as its motion to turn on the outside light. It looked nothing like a wendigo I saw before. Instead, it looked like a demonic deer or elk. It looked dead, and it had pale skin stretched around bone, white eyes with black irises, and long slender fingers. It tried looking inside, but couldn't see us, and I tried jiggling the handle to open the door. That was it. Shoot it. Somehow, my father subconsciously agreed, and we fired four shots at the same time, two of which hit the thing in the chest, while the other two missed or hit somewhere else. It didn't stick around to let us see. It howled into the night, something that's keeping me awake for almost a week later. It sprinted into the brush. It didn't run, but literally sprinted. It had no fluid movements, and before it hit the tree line over 20 meters away, it went on all fours, hopping into the forest beyond. My father and I packed up, with me keeping watch with the guns while my father got the trailer ready. We left the gate open after ramming it, heading home at top speed. We didn't get pulled over, surprisingly, and we got home. We both agreed not to tell my mother or my sister about it, or at least not the truth anyways. He left to go back out there today to hunt and get an elk but he left with four other people, and all of them are damn good shots. Still, I can't think about what might have happened to him had he gone there alone instead of me tagging along. To give you some background information, this event occurred a little over a year ago, and I still haven't been able to even begin to get over it. I'm a 22 year old female and at the time I was 21. My father and I had recently moved to a new town that was a fair amount more rural than the town I had previously lived in and our new house was a large ranch style house with a basement. I was home from college and my parents had left for a week to celebrate their wedding anniversary with their friends who lived several hours away. Before I continue. I'll give you a quick layout of the house so that you'll be able to imagine the setting a little bit more clearly. There were three doors which led into the house, one on the front porch, a sliding glass door on the back which did have a lock and a floor length curtains for privacy, 
and another door on the other side of the wall from the bedroom which led into the garage and the basement. When you walk out of my bedroom and turn, you can see all across the house, kitchen, living room, and dining area, to the door of my parents' bedroom and the stairs leading up from the basement. It had been a few days since my parents left, and I hadn't had any problems. They had sent me a couple of messages on Facebook, letting me know that they arrived at their friend's house safely and were having a good time. The day had gone well, and I was sure to check that I locked all the doors of the house once the sun started to go down. It was about 11 o'clock at night, and I was doing my nightly routine of laying in bed and messing around on the computer, when I suddenly got this sinking feeling of dread. I felt as if I was being watched. It was summer and we didn't have any AC, so I had a large box fan in the window, blowing the cool night air into my hot room. But once that feeling settled over me, I decided that I should remove the fan and close the window, just in case. Once removing the fan, shutting and locking the door and window, and pulling down the curtain, I felt a little bit better. However, I still couldn't shake that feeling of dread. I lay back in bed and tried to continue what I was doing. Though I didn't put my headphones back on, after a few minutes, I began to hear something that sounded like a light scratching noise. I sat still in bed, listening to the sound, trying to pinpoint what it was and if I recognized it at all. Our new house, although relatively close in distance to our neighbors, had a fair amount of forest around it, so I thought the scratching may have been an animal or someone's dog that got loose and wanted to come inside. After a few minutes the scratching stopped and everything returned to silence. So I figured that I was probably right and that it must have been an animal. My relief was short lived. As soon as the scratching stopped from the other side of the wall, I began to hear slow footsteps descending into the basement. This is when I knew I was completely fucked. There was no way I could get out of the house without walking past the basement stairs. We didn't have a house phone and at the time, I was in the process of getting a new cell phone because the mine was broken and beyond repair. I sat there for a few seconds, wondering what I should do. I knew that I would need to get out of the house as soon as possible, and that the more time I wasted, the worse it would be for me. I contemplated popping the screen out of my bedroom window and jumping out, but it was far enough off the ground that there was a good chance I would end up getting hurt if I did, not to mention that if I jumped out the window and hurt myself, I wouldn't be able to run for help and I would be right next to the door that whoever was in my house had gone through. So I decided to very carefully and quietly open my door and peek around the corner and if the coast was clear, I would make a mad dash for the front door and sprint to my neighbor's house. I very slowly opened my bedroom door, letting my eyes adjust to the darkness of the house before creeping around the corner and looking to see if I was safe to make a run for it. What I saw nearly made me vomit. As my eyes scanned the house, I noticed that something was off. I squinted hard as I looked over the basement stairs and was able to make out a shape of a man. What made it worse, it wasn't just standing at the top of the stairs. It was crawling up them like some kind of nightmare creature. I quickly backed into my room again shutting and locking the door as quietly as I could. I didn't think he'd seen me, but there was no way that I was going to make a run for it now. My only choice was to pop the screen and jump out the window. As I was unlocking and opening the window, I heard the handle to my bedroom door turn. Once the man realized it was locked, in a sickish tone, he said, I know you're in there. This was followed by a loud cackle, and what I can only imagine was him throwing himself at full force against my door. I ripped the screen out of the window and flung myself out. I landed wrong on my right foot and I was sure I'd hurt my ankle. But at the time, I couldn't think of any other thing other than getting as far away as possible. I got up and ran as fast as I could to my neighbor's house, knocking on their door in a panicked frenzy and ringing the doorbell over and over. I looked over at my house and I was yelling for my neighbors to let me in. And I swear to God, 
I can see the man standing out my window, waving at me. My neighbors finally opened the door after what felt like forever, and I managed to explain well enough what was going on for them to let me in and call the police. I stayed with them until the police arrived, and the police searched my house and found that the locked door to the basement had been picked, and that the door to my bedroom was hanging off the hinges. They weren't able to find the man anywhere, and because I had only seen him for a split second in the dark, I couldn't provide them with a good description of him. Of course, I got into contact with my parents immediately, and they hurried home. The police took a statement and searched the area for the man, but of course, they came up with nothing. After this event, my parents and I were sure to add a deadbolt lock to the door leading into the basement and to the door leading out of the basement to the rest of the house. They also helped me pay to get a new phone. What really bothers me about all this is that nothing was stolen. There wasn't even any evidence that the guy had looked through anything while he was in the house. Just to start out, my roommate and BFF of 10 years is a man slut. He has a new girlfriend at least two times a month, usually. It doesn't really bother me unless she's a squealer. Unfortunately, all of them usually become squealers when they find out his best friend and roommate is a female and lives with them. I take it as their weird way of staking their territory. I don't know, but I hate listening to my friend, who I consider a brother, banging some random chick, and even more, I hate the awkward chance encounters with them when they emerge from their love nest. When we first moved in together two years ago, I would resolve this issue by blasting music, but sometimes, unless I was willing to harm my eardrums, that wouldn't even drown them out. There was one girl who was really wild, and for the first time actually managed to drive me out of the house. It was a weekend night, and there wasn't a whole lot to do, so I ended up driving down to the river where they have a picnic area and just sat there in my jeep. As I was planning on how I would bitch out my friend, I noticed that there was movement in the trees across from me. This entire area was pretty dense woods. I flipped on my lights because I wondered if it was an animal or something and curiosity got the better of me. I sat there for about five minutes and was about to turn off my lights because I was worried about my battery but just before I did, I saw something run from behind one of the trees to another. It looked like a really thin man, but was completely naked, with no hair, and it was a grayish white color. It startled the crap out of me, and I peeled out of there as quick as possible. Luckily, my friend was finished by the time I got back, and I told him about it. He laughed and said it was a good story, but I knew he didn't believe me. So once his girl was gone, I forced him into my jeep and took him to the spot. This time, I kept the lights off and my eyes trained on the darkness in front of us. At first, my friend blew it off, but then he noticed that it seemed like something was moving. With the lights off, it really looked like there was about four or five of these things out there and they were darting in and out of sight. Either that or there was just one of them going all over the place. Randomly. I turned the lights on and sure enough, there it was again, moving quickly out of sight. It was hard to make out any details though, like a face or anything like that, but it definitely didn't look right. Now, when my BFF gets too noisy, I kind of look forward to heading down to the river. I've seen it about three other times, and I've tried catching pictures, but without any luck. My plan is to keep trying though. Once. I had this insane idea of actually heading out there with a camcorder, but I was only out of my jeep for about two seconds before I envisioned this thing going after me and I changed my mind. <laughs> 